The Miami Marlins and the Toronto Blue Jays started their three-game series tonight, and if you're a Blue Jays fan, you were probably tuned out of the game by the seventh inning. If you're a Marlins fan, you were there to the end of the game as the Miami Marlins destroyed the Toronto Blue Jays tonight in every aspect of the game you could imagine. But before we get into this recap, make sure you hit the subscribe button as we do MLB on the channel trades, news, rumors, game recaps, live streams of the game. And we also do the NHL side of things too for the winter because let's be honest, there's no baseball during the winter after October baseball. There's pretty much nothing else to do but watch hockey. So if you hit that subscribe button, we got you covered on the channel. Now let's get back to it. I said the Marlins destroyed the Blue Jays. It's true. Uh, Luis Arise continues his unbelievable hitting sensational play he's had all season. Going 5-for-5 five five against the Blue Jays. And pitching for the Blue Jays just wasn't there. Barrios had a rough outing. Nate Pearson had a rough outing. And we'll go through the stats. And Luis Arise is just an unbelievable player right now. <coughs> Sorry, I'm just... A Coming down with some kind of throat issue, but Luis Arias is on another planet right now. And during the game, they're like Luis Arias versus Bo Bichette, which is a good matchup for Bo Bichette. Seeing what Luis Arias has done, been in the league just a year or two longer than Bo has, and they can lean on each other how to become better. Bo Bichette's an excellent opposite field hitter. Luis Arias can learn something from Bo Bichette and. Boba Shek can learn the vision that Luis Arise has and his how he approaches his swings at every at bat. So that's a good matchup to keep an eye on for the rest of the series. Now, like I said, we'll get into the game where it was 0 0 to the bottom of the third, where. <coughs> sorry. Where the Marlins put on some runs, three runs to be exact, as Solar would homer to center on a 2 0 count. After Arias got on base, and then Cooper would hit a single to the left after Sanchez hit a double and got came in and scored. Bottom four, Soler would hit a sack fly to Kevin Kiermaier. Stallings would score. Sanchez grounded out to first baseman Guerrero, unassisted. Davis scored a rise to third, and Dela Cruz to second. Bottom seventh, Wendell single to center, and Sanchez would score, moving Cooper from first to second. Birdie would single to center. Cooper scored. Wendell would go to third on that play. Arias would single to left. Wendell would score. Birdie would score. And Stallings to second. So bases loaded in that play with those guys scoring. And Amaya would single home Hampson. And Stallings would go to third. Davis would go to second on another bases loaded hit for the Marlins. So the Marlins did really good with runners in scoring position. And Brazoben would get the win over Barreos. He had three strikeouts and two innings, no hits given up. The one stat that the Marlins really destroyed the Jays in were the hits. They had 19 to the Jays, seven. No errors on the Marlins, one on the Jays. And Marlins scored all their runs from base hits, except for the home run from George Soler, who I believe... It is his 21st home run of the season, so he's had an unbelievable season. Uh, the Jays would not walk at all, when, but the Marlins walked twice. Ten strikeouts against the Jays, eight against the Marlins, and six runners left on base for the Jays, and 12 for the Marlins. Like I said, sorry about my throat. I'm just coming down with something here. But looking at all the stats, so we'll go player by player. George Springer would strike out twice and get a hit going one for four. Varsha was one for four with a strikeout. Bichette two for four with two strikeouts. Uh, Guerrero would go 0 for four with no strikeouts, nothing. So all ground balls and flyouts for Guerrero Jr. there. Horwitz would go one for four with two strikeouts. Matt Chapman would go 0 for four with a strikeout. Danny Jansen continuing his hot streak for the Toronto Blue Jays. Ever since coming back from the injury, will go 1-for-3 with a strikeout. Heinemann will go 0-for-0. Biggio was 0-for-3, just like Vladdy, ground outs, fly outs, no strikeouts. And Kiermaier was 1-for-3 with the strikeout. 
Jose Barrios would pitch four innings, giving up eight hits, five earned runs, walking one, striking out four. His ERA is now up to 3.64. Trent Thornton would come in, strike out two, give up two hits, over two innings of work, no runs given up. Nate Pearson, who's been dominant out of the bullpen, struggled today, only getting through a third of an inning, giving up four hits, walking a batter, striking out a batter, and giving up five runs. Mitch White would come in and finish that inning, going two thirds of an inning, giving up two hits and a run score or a strikeout. Sorry. And because of the new rule, you can use position players when you're down by more than I believe it's seven runs. Uh, Clement, who is a shortstop for the Jays, came in, and gave up three hits, one earned run in one inning of work. Like I said, Arias huge game, five for five today with a run scored. He had two RBIs, no strikeouts. Amea would pinch hit for him, going one for one with an RBI. Solar would go one for four with a run, three RBIs, and a home run. He was also pinched hit by Fortes, who went 0 for 1. Uh, De La Cruz was two for five with an RBI. Sanchez was two for five with two runs scored, two strikeouts, and an RBI. Garrett Cooper was 2 for 5 with a run and an RBI. Uh, Wendell was 1 for 5 with a run and an RBI. Birdie was 3 for 4 with a run and an RBI. And Stallings was 1 for 3 with 2 runs, 2 walks, and a strikeout. And Jonathan Davis, the former Blue Jay, was 1 for 4 with a run scored. Hoeing pitched 4 innings for the Marlins, giving up 3 hits, 5 Ks. His ERA is down to 270. Uh, the winner, winning pitcher, because you got to go five innings or more, is Brezomben, who pitched two innings, giving up one hit, striking out three. Uh, Cargoas pitched an inning, giving up a hit, no strikeouts, and Bradley would finish the game with two innings pitched, two hits, and two strikeouts. So that is the game. Basically recap there, the whole game recap. As the Toronto Blue Jays lose to the Miami Marlins 11-0. Bounce back game for the Jays tomorrow. Game starts at 4.40 uh, Pacific time. That's where I am. Mountain time, sorry. So it would be 6.40 Eastern time. Back in Miami where the Blue Jays try and even up the series. And the Miami Marlins decide to try and go up 2-0 in the series. Thanks for watching. And sorry, videos aren't usually like this. My throat's just been really sore of late. So thank you guys for tuning in. I'll catch you on the next one.